even if you didn't know that acronym, now you can know that if you ever see IOT, that means the internet of things. So those are all your smart devices that surround you. And depending on how you cough, may talk and say, what, what sort of support do you need? What can I order online for you? <laughs> Shall I turn the oven on? All of the smart devices that we're surrounded by. And that it's, it seems like it's been owned by kind of the, the business space, but it's not that there's a lot of nonprofits who have already been in the space and the use of chat bots that you see already on a lot of websites to help automate questions that instead of going to an FAQ page, there's some sort of little chat bot in the lower right-hand corner. Um, this is where your existing website partner can come into play. There's a lot of options. There's a lot of tools that can be used to help with this and the, the flow for thinking about how you could best benefit from this. So what are some of the regular questions that your team is having to answer? Or how can you help direct people to the correct member of your team and use a chat bot to help with that? So then that question goes directly into that staff member's inbox instead of going through one, two, three processes before it gets in the right place. I know of a lot of organizations that are using this to help connect with um, especially human service organizations, connecting with services in a different way, a way to also be anonymous in engagement. So depending on the nature of your work, maybe it's important from a safety perspective that a lot of information isn't shared up front before someone can know if they can get support. I think of an organization we work with that supports victims of domestic violence and the way that they have used chatbots within their website to create a safer space for people to get help and in a way that can't be tracked then on a phone if say a boyfriend takes a phone and looks at it. So there's, there's a lot of transformational things that can be done with AI and all of these new tools that are available and at increasingly either free or low cost. That's not just in a for-profit space. This is not just businesses. That are benefiting from this. And it's also not just big nonprofits that can take advantage. I think if you start looking around and kind of see, especially chat bots and how, how much more frequently they exist, kind of the, the lowest hanging fruit is how long Facebook Messenger has been around, right? And the way that that can be integrated in with your website and most organizations having some sort of Facebook presence and to almost start light. Another concept I came across when I was putting together this tiny little slide that a lot of time could be spent on <laughs> in talking about is this idea of micro moments. And basically when we turn, we all reflexively pick up a device when we have a question or want to know what year something happened or how to spell a word even. So that we pick up our smartphones just out of habit to learn something new, to do something, to discover information, of course, watching things when we're in line and waiting, and that all of those moments, there's a lot that AI can help interject within those moments to remind of what your work is and remind of opportunities for how your community can engage in that work. So like I said, look for, look for in the schedule <laughs> in the future. In quarter two of this year, we'll, we'll have someone do a full presentation about all the opportunities and the specific tools that can be used. But I think right now, like I said at the very beginning, is awareness, building awareness, having in mind, paying attention to the spaces that you're in, like that usability rule of that even you spend the most time not in your space, that you spend the most time somewhere else and paying attention to what, what tools exist there. And and how you feel when you're using them to have that incorporated back into the work that you do.